Hello and welcome to this presentation on differentiation of standard forms using standard tables. This presentation does assume you've seen a previous presentation related to an introduction to differentiation. The processes and standard tables derived in that presentation will underpin the worked examples of this presentation. This presentation does assume that you're also quite proficient with algebraic techniques such as transposing equations and the use of the laws and the rules of indices. Differentiation. From our previous presentation, where we introduced differentiation, we found that it was a quick and accurate method of determining the gradient or rate of change of a function, basically finding the gradient it points on curves. From the previous presentation, it was stated that there are two notations generally used in the literature. One relates to Leibniz notation. This is where you're given y is equal to some function of x. And when you differentiate it, you state that as a dy by dx term. And the second was called function notation, relating to Isaac Newton's work on the calculus. We're given a function f of x. When we differentiate that, we get f dash of x. So dy by dx is the same as f dash x. And both are termed differential coefficients or the derivative. The process of finding the differential coefficient is termed differentiation. We will be using both the above notations, the dy by dx and the function dash x, within this presentation to try and familiarise you with these two notations. When performing differentiation, engineers often make use of what are called standard derivative tables. Table 1 shows you a standard derivative table with just one function y is equal to ax to the n is the original function and the derivative, the dy by dx, is shown as an x to the n minus 1. We showed this proof in the previous presentation on the introduction to differentiation using classical differentiation. Just for reference, the function y equals ax to the n is often referred to as a polynomial. In example 1, we're asked to differentiate the function y is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 3. And each of those terms are effectively of the form ax to the n, as you'll see in a moment. We're going to solve example 1 using two notations, both the Leibniz and the function notation, just so you can see the comparison between them, because we'll be using both of these notations within the work that follows. So looking at the Leibniz notation, we're given y is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 3. And notice I put x to the 0 against the 3. I've got there minus 3 times x to the 0. Now I've added the x to the 0 to make it of the form ax to the n to allow me to differentiate it. But just note that x to the 0, anything to the power 0, is equal to 1. So I haven't affected the equation. I've still got minus 3 there. The minus 3 times x to the 0 is really minus 3 times 1. What we're going to do now is to differentiate the function. Now, it's sometimes worth being aware that with the terms in the y function, there is a 1 in front of the x squared. We don't usually write the 1s, but it's there. And there is a 1 against the x in the second term. It's x to the power 1. And again, we don't usually write the 1s. But I'm going to put them in because it helps with the differentiation. So now I'm going to differentiate the y function with respect to x to form the dy by dx. And I'm going to use the forms in table 1 above. So all the y terms are the form ax to the n. So looking at the first term, the a is equal to 1. The x is equal to x. x is not always x, but it's x in this case. And the n is equal to 2. So following the derivative pattern for dy by dx, I'll get the 1 times the 2 is 2. x to the power of 2 take away 1 is 1. I haven't written the 1 there. There is a 1. We don't usually write the 1, so basically 2x. But there's a 1 there, so that's 1 off the index. Looking at the second term, I've got plus 2x to the 1. So now a is 2, x is x, and n is 1. So again, following the pattern through, I get the 2 times the 1. is 2, so it's plus 2, x to the 0. And don't forget, as I said before, x to the 0 is 1. So that's basically 2 times 1 is 2. And looking at the last term, I've got minus 3x to the 0. We added the x to the 0 to make it the form ax to the n. So in this case, the a is minus 3, the x is x, and the n is 0. And if you follow the pattern of a n x n minus 1, you can see it disappears straight away because you get minus 3, the a, times by the n of 0. So straight away that term disappears. 
And that's true for all constants. Any pure numbers, when you differentiate them, they will always disappear. So just typing up the function for dy by dx, I get 2x plus 2. Sometimes that's written in the terms of the y dash notation, just shorthand notation for the first differential of y respect to x. So dy by dx can be written as y dash, and it's 2x plus 2. If we now just show the function notation used for the differentiation process, we start off with this time on the left-hand side, f of x instead of y, so that's function of x is equal to the x squared plus 2x minus 3x to naught, that's before. And notice when we differentiate it, we don't get dy by dx, we get f dash x to show it's the first differential of x. But everything else is exactly the same. So just a different type of notation. But we will be using both notations in the word that follows. Just a further note here. When I was compiling this presentation, I used lots of reference sources, which are labelled in the bibliography at the back of the presentation. And I found that lots of the questions were asking the same thing. They were asking us to differentiate but they were stated in a different way, and I felt that that could confuse students. So on this slide, I've just put a list of some of the terminology I found that all means to differentiate. So, for example, if you're asked to find the differential coefficient of y with respect to x, that means to differentiate. If you're asked to find the derivative of y with respect to x, that means to differentiate. If you're asked to find the derived function, means differentiate. If you're asked to find the gradient of the function, that means differentiate. If you're asked to find the tangent to a graph at a point, that means differentiate. So just for your reference, all those terms mean exactly the same thing. They all mean differentiate function given. This slide just shows you some tables that we had in the previous presentation on an introduction differentiation. Standard tables for derivatives, a larger table here of various functions ax to the m we've already looked at. We've got e to the ax, we've got ln ax, sin ax, cos ax, tan ax, functions we're referring to in this presentation. And we've got the derivative forms of dy by dx is shown on the right-hand side here. And also we'll need to use the laws of indices as we go through some of the worked examples. The laws of indices help underpin the use of standard forms in this work. Just a brief word here about successive differentiation. Sometimes we want to differentiate a function not just once but twice to get what's called the second derivative. And in a context that might be the case where we're given displacement in terms of x or s or whatever the function is. And we differentiate it once to find the velocity and we differentiate a second time and then we find the acceleration. So from one equation for displacement we can find two further equations by simply continuing to differentiate. So, for example, if we were given distance, s, as some function of time, we can differentiate that equation to get velocity, v, often written as ds by dt, or function dash t. And that's the gradient of the distance time graph. So if we take a point on the distance time graph, which is shown here, the gradient of that point is actually the velocity, v is equal to ds by dt. If we differentiate the velocity equation, we get acceleration. So A could be written as dv by dt, i.e. the gradient of the velocity time graph. So given our velocity time graph, taking a point on that curve, if we find the gradient of that point, that is actually acceleration, which can be written as dv by dt or d2s by dt squared, another way of writing the same thing, the second differential of s with respect to time is d to s by dt squared. Or again, another way of writing the same thing is function double dash t. This slide is just shown for reference because some of the questions later on will ask us to find velocity and acceleration, and that will mean going through the double differentiation process. Example 2 is an illustration of successive differentiation. So if the distance travelled by an object follows the function s is equal to 2t cubed minus 4t squared plus 5t, we've got to find the velocity and the acceleration equations. So given the original equation for distance, s is equal to 2t cubed minus 4t squared plus 5t, notice they're all of the form of ax to the m. We take the first term of 2t cubed, the a is 2, 
the x is t in this case, and the n is 3. Take the second term, the a is minus 4, the x is t, and the n is 2. And take the third term, the a is plus 5, the x is t, and the n is 1. We don't write the 1s, but there's a 1 against the t. But if we find the first differential equation, so we differentiate the s function, we get velocity in this context, v, which can be written as ds by dt, instead of dy by dx, our notation we used in previous questions. In the context of this question, the y is the s and the x is the t, so we write ds by dt. And that's equal to, following the pattern above here of an x to the n minus 1, 2 times 3 is 6, t to the 3 take away 1 is 2. For the next term, we've got the minus 4t squared. So follow the pattern through. Minus 4 times 2 is minus 8. Take 1 off the index. That's t to the power of 1. We don't write the 1s. And for the final term, the plus 5t, the a is 5 and the n is 1. We don't write the 1s. Was there 1 there? So following the pattern through, a times n will be 5 times 1. So that's plus 5. And it will be t to the 0. 1 take 1 will be 0. And anything to the power of 0 is 1. So our velocity equation is 6t squared minus 8t plus 5. So putting the value of t into this equation, we'll find the velocity. If we now find the second differential, which in the context of this question will relate to acceleration, a, sometimes written as d2s by dt squared, to denote the second differential of s, we get 12t minus 8. And again, that follows the patterns of ax to the n. So for the velocity equation, we get 6t squared, that's an ax to the n. So follow the patterns through, that will be 6 times 2 is 12t to the power of 1, simply t, 12t. For the next term, the minus 8t, that's again ax to the n, where a is equal to the minus 8, this time x is t, and n is 1. So follow the patterns through, we get 1 times the minus 8 is minus 8, t to the 0, and t to the 0 is 1. The last term, the plus 5, that's a constant. Whenever you differentiate a constant, that will disappear. Because don't forget, the plus 5 is really a horizontal line. If you drew y is equal to 5, it's a horizontal line. And the gradient of a horizontal line is 0. So when you differentiate, you find the gradient. So you'd find the gradient is 0. So our acceleration equation, A, is 12t minus A. Put values of t into that equation, you'll get the acceleration at that time. Here are some tutorial exercises related to differentiation. You'll find in these exercises we'll be using the laws of indices, so you'll need to refer to your laws of indices, but all of the functions shown in exercise 1 to 4 are standard form ax to the n polynomials, so you just need that derivative. These exercises will get progressively more complicated because they require more use of indices to make standard forms, but I will show all the solutions on the following slide. If you want to attempt the exercises before reviewing the solutions on the following slides, please feel free to start the presentation now and then have a go yourselves. The answers are shown in the brackets on the right-hand side of each exercise. Exercise 1. We're asked to find the differential coefficients of the following functions. A. We're given y is equal to 12x cubed. And that's at the form ax to the n where a is equal to 12, x is x, and n is equal to 3. If you follow the pattern through, the a n x the n minus 1, then dy by dx would equal to 3 times 12, that's the a times the n, multiplied by x to the power of n take away 1, that's 3 take away 1. So tidying that up, 3 times 12 is 36, x to the 2, so 36x squared. You do not need the intermediate step I've shown there. You can go straight from the y to the final dy by dx solution. But if it helps you, uh, put in the intermediate step showing how to multiply the a by the n, etc. Part b, we're asked to differentiate y is equal to 12x to the minus 3. Again, a standard form ax to the n. a in this case is 12x is x and n is minus 3. If you follow the pattern through. We get the first differential dy by dx is minus 3 times 12, so that's minus 36. x to the n take away 1, it's minus 3 originally, and we take away 1, that will go to minus 4. I've also shown the answer as minus 36 divided by x to the 4, that's an indice 
problem. I've used this rule 5 here on my table that 1 upon x to the n is equal to x to the minus n. So you can see where I've found that final solution, that final form. And again, we'll be using indices in lots of these questions as they evolve to simplify either the initial question given or the final answer. Part 3, we're given y is equal to x to the 4 minus 2x cubed plus x to the 0.5. Now we've got three terms on the right-hand side, but because they're separated by a plus or a minus, we can take each term individually and differentiate it as an ax to the n function. So looking at the first term, x to the 4, that's ax to the n, where a is actually 1. There's a 1 in front of the x we don't write, but there's a 1 there. So a is 1, x is x, and n is 4. Follow the pattern through there dy by dx will be 1 times 4 is 4, x to the 4 take away 1, which is 3. The second term, we've got minus 2x cubed, so minus 2 is the a, x is x, and n is 3. Follow the pattern through, that becomes minus 2 times 3, so that's minus 6, x to the 3 take away 1, x to the squared. And the final term, we've got 1x to the 0 0.5, so a is 1, x is x, and n is 0 0.5. Again, follow the pattern through 1 times 0 0.5, plus 0.5x, we take 1 off the index, so 0.5 take away 1 is minus 0.5. Exercise 2, part A, we're asked to differentiate y is equal to 6. Now notice I've written that as 6x to the 0. I'm doing that because I want to make it the form ax to the n. And by adding the x to the 0, I give it the form ax to the n, the polynomial form. But don't forget that x to the 0, anything to the power of 0 is 1. So I've really got still 6 there. I haven't affected the original question given. I've still got y is equal to 6. But writing it as y is equal to 6x to 0 gives me the form I can differentiate it. If you follow the differential pattern, you get a n x to n minus 1. And straight away you can see it goes to 0 because 0 times 6, the a times the n, would be 0. So the whole function goes to 0. And that's something to remember. Whenever we differentiate a constant, a pure number without an x associated with it, it always goes to zero. Because basically y is equal to 6 is a horizontal line, and the gradient of a horizontal line is zero. And don't forget, when we differentiate, what we're basically doing is finding gradients of dy by dx function. So in essence, remember that the differential coefficient of a constant is zero. Part B wants us to differentiate y is equal to 6x. Notice I've written that as 6x to the 1 to give the pattern ax to the n. When I differentiate that, I'll get 1 times 6 is 6, and take 1 off the index, I'll get 6x to 0, and as always, x to 0 is 1, so basically dy by dx is simply 6. So in general, the differential coefficient of kx is k. Exercise 3, we're asked to find the derivatives now of, in this case, part a, y is equal to 3 multiplied by the square root of x. Now, the square root of x is not a standard form. We don't have in our table a times the square root of x. We don't have that. We have ax to the n. So we need to put the 3 times the square root of x in terms of ax to the n. And to do that, we're going to use indices. And it's this fourth rule here on the table. What you notice here is if we have the format of the nth root of x to the power m, we can write that as a fractional index as x to the m upon n. Now, with the square root, it's actually quite difficult to get the m in the n because although we don't write it, there's actually a 2 inside the square root function here and there's a 1 against the x. So when we come to write the square root of x in terms of its fractional index, what we actually get is x to the half, because we can see the m is 1 now, and the n -er is 2. So we can write 3 times the square root of x as 3 multiplied by x to the power of a half, using the fractional notation. Now that's given us the ax to the n format. The a is 3, the x is x, and the n is a half in this case. So now we can differentiate it using our standard form. So differentiating, we get 3 times a half, or 1.5 if you want the decimal, and we take 1 off the index, so taking 1 off the half, we will get minus a half. All I've done on the last line is again use the laws of indices here. The negative index, the x to the negative n, shows in the table here for item 5, can be written as 1 upon x to the positive n, 
And that's what I've done here. The two is in the denominator already, and I've just brought the x to the half to the bottom line, and I've written it as the square root of x. I've again used the item 4 here in our table to write it as the square root of x. There's nothing wrong with this line here that's correct. We can leave it in that format if we want to, but I encourage you to think through the final line I've written here. How did I get the 3 divided by 2 times the square root of x? I'll let you think about that one. But it's all to do with the indices tables. Exercise 3, so part B, gives a function of y is equal to 5 divided by the cube root of x to the 4. Now again, that's not standard form. We don't have that kind of format in our standard tables. We need to try and find an ax to the n form. So we're going to use indices again to help us with this. So given y is equal to 5 divided by the cube root of x to the 4, I'm going to use the fractional index notation here. We notice that the m in this case is 4 and the n is equal to 3. So we can write that as a fractional index of x to the power of m over n. So in this case, that will be 5 divided by the x of the 4 upon 3. I suggest you just take a moment to think that through for yourselves. What I've done on the next line is bring the x to the 4 upon 3 to the top line and make it negative. So I get 5 times x to the power of negative 4 upon 3. And I'm using the reciprocal index to do that. I'm going from this side, 1 over x to the n, to this side, x to the minus n. Again, I suggest you think that step through for yourselves. But now I have standard form. I have y is equal to a, x to the n, where a is 5, x is x, and n is minus 4 upon 3. If I follow through the standard pattern for the a, n, x, the n minus 1, I can write dy by dx is the minus 4 upon 3 multiplied by 5, and x is to the power of minus 4 upon 3 take away 1. Just tighten up the numbers there, minus 4 times the 5 is minus 20, so minus 20 divided by 3, x to the power of, now minus 4 upon 3 take away 1, think of that as minus 4 upon 3 take away 3 upon 3, you get minus 7 upon 3 using fractional subtraction, so x to the minus 7 upon 3. What I've done on the next line is gone back to my negative index again, my reciprocal index, and I've taken the x to the minus 7 upon 3 from the top line to the bottom line. So I end up with minus 20 divided by now the 3, and that's times by the x to the 7 upon 3. Now it's a change of sign there, because I've gone from the top line to the bottom line. And the final line there for dy by dx, I've just used the fractional index again, and gone from my x to 7 upon 3 as a fractional index, and I've written that as the cube root of x to the power of 7. So I end up with minus 20 divided by 3 times the cube root of x to the 7. Again, I would strongly encourage you to go back to the beginning of that slide and follow the steps we've undertaken there to make, first of all, the y function in standard form x to the n, and then after we've differentiated it, how we rewrote the format of dy by dx, again using the rules of indices. Exercise 3, part C, we're given that v, which is the y, is equal to 1 over 8 theta, which is x in this case, to the power of 3. So make sure you realize that's a theta, not a 0. What we've got to do again is try and get this into standard form so that we can then differentiate it. So slightly different notation here. It said the y is now v and the x is now theta. So given that v is equal to 1 divided by 8 theta to the 3, first thing I'm going to do is try and get the theta on the top line. I'm leave my variable on the top line so it forms an ax to the n format. And I'm going to use the reciprocal rule of indices again here. So I'm going from the 1 upon x to the n to the x to the minus n. So in this question, I get v is equal to theta to the minus 3, bringing theta to 3 from the denominator to numerator, change the sign, and that's divided by the 8. Notice the 8 is still in the bottom line here. So now I've got my standard form of ax to the n, where a in this case is 1. There's a 1 in front of theta. We don't write the 1s, but there is a 1 there. So that's my a. My x in this case is theta, and my n is minus 3. So following the pattern through, and notice the notation here. Instead of having dy by dx, I've got dv by d theta. I get minus 3 times 1, so that's minus 3. Theta to the power of minus 3 take away 1, so that's minus 4. And that's still divided by the 8s. 
constant. Just like you rearrange on the next line, dv by d theta can be written as minus 3 divided by the 8 and theta 4 now on the bottom line. So again, I'm using the negative rule of indices again and taking the theta to the minus 4 from the top line to the bottom line. And as I cross the line, I change the sign of the index. So the final solution now I've written is minus 3 divided by the 8 times the theta 4. To be precise here, I should really have a bracket around the denominator just to make sure it's clearly defined. Exercise 4. We're asked to differentiate with respect to x the following function. y is equal to 5x to the 4 plus the 4x minus 1 upon 2x squared plus x to the minus half and minus 3. So I've got there five terms on the right hand side but because they're separated by a plus or a minus I just take each one of those terms individually and I differentiate it in the form of ax to the n. So I'm going to use standard forms but some of the terms need to be put into standard form. The 1 upon 2x squared at the moment is not in standard form and the constant at the end really should be written as 3x to the 0. But all the other terms are. So differentiating the y function, the first term is 5x to the 4, that's of the form ax to the m. When I differentiate that, get my dy by dx of the first term, notice it's of the form an x to the n minus 1. So I'll get 4 times 5, x to the 4 take away 1. If I simplify that, I get 20x cubed. That's the final answer, 20x cubed. Taking the second term, I've got plus 4x to the 1, so the a is 4, the x x and the n is 1. Follow the pattern so that becomes 1 times 4 x to the 1 take away 1. So that's plus 4 x to the 0 or of course simply plus 4. Notice with the third term I brought the x squared from the bottom line to the top to make x to the minus 2 using our reciprocal rule of indices. And I've put the 1 upon 2 is minus half in front of the x term just so I've got the a x to the n for that. Notice the negative outside here. Following the pattern through, I'll get minus 2 times the half, x to the minus 2 take away 1. That simplifies to plus 1, the minus 2 times half gives me 1, the minus minus makes a plus, and that's x to the minus 3. Just written that on the last line as plus 1 over x cubed, again using this reciprocal rule of indices. My fourth term, I've got plus x to the minus a half, and don't forget again there is a 1 in front of the x to the minus a half here. So again, following the pattern through, I'll get 1 times the minus a half is minus a half x to the minus half take away 1. So that simplifies to minus the half x to the minus 3 upon 2, or minus 1.5. And again, on the last line, I've just simply simplified that. I've got 1 over the 2, and I've brought the x to the minus 3 upon 2 to the bottom line to get x to the positive 3 upon 2. The final term, the minus 3, don't forget, whenever you differentiate a constant, it will always disappear. So that disappears from the dy by dx solution. The dy by dx final solution is 20x cubed plus 4 plus 1 upon x cubed minus 1 upon 2x to the 3 upon 2. Again, I would strongly encourage you to go back and revisit the solution there because it's quite complicated there. We've got lots of terms to deal with and the indice patterns to deal with. So take your time, work through the slide, make sure you understand each of the steps. Now exercise 5 and exercise 6 have different functions. On the previous exercises we looked at polynomials, the ax to the n's. Now we're going to look in exercise 5 at a sine function. We've got y is equal to 3 times the sine of 4x. And also we've got a function of t is equal to 2 cos of 3t. So two different functions there and different variables as well. And also in exercise 6 we've got a y is equal to 3e to the 5x. So we've got an exponential function there. Our b of that, we've got y is equal to 2 divided by e to the 3t. So we've got these indices there. And part c, we've got the y is equal to 6 times ln 2x. So different functions here. Again, if you refer to the table on the previous slide of standard forms, you might want to attempt these questions before looking at the solutions over leaf. I would strongly encourage you to stop the presentation here and have a quick go at them and see if you've got the right answers. The solutions are shown over leaf and the answers are shown in the brackets here for your reference. So exercise 5 solution, we've got to find the differential coefficients of A we're given, Y is equal to 3 multiplied by the sine of 4X. 
the variable here is x. So this is a standard form. If you look in your tables, you will see sine of ax. So it's just given us the sine 4x effectively. The 3 is like a factor on the sine of 4x. So what's the differential of sine ax? We're told that goes to a multiplied by the cos of ax. Again, if you go back to our presentation on introduction differentiation, you'll see why we get this differential of cos ax. So looking at the differential dy by dx, we get 4, which is the a, coming to the front of our differential, multiplied by the 3, the factor we had originally, and that's multiplied by the cos of 4x. Just tidying that up, dy by dx is 4 times 3 is 12, cos of 4x. Looking at part B, we've got a function of t, so t is the variable here. We've got 2 times the cos of 3t. Then go to our table, we find the cos of ax. So in this case, the a is 3 and the x is t. And we're told that the differential of cos ax is minus a sin ax. Again, we showed that in our previous presentation. So the dy by dx in this case will be the minus 3. That's the a multiplied by the factor of 2, and that's multiplied by the sine of 3t. Just tidying that up, dy by dx is minus 6 times the sine of 3t. So reasonably straightforward differentials following the standard forms in our standard differential tables. Exercise 6 requires us to find the differentials of exponential functions and natural log functions. So part A, we're asked to differentiate y is equal to 3e to the 5x. Now in our standard derivative tables, we find e to the ax as a standard form, which is what we've got here. We've got e to the 5x, or a is 5, and we've got the solution, the derivative, is a e to the ax. So our derivative now, dy by dx, is equal to 5, that's the a, multiplied by 3, the constant, and that's multiplied by e to the 5x. Simplify on the right hand side, we end up with dy by dx equal to 5 times 3 is 15 e to the 5x. Part b wants us to differentiate y is equal to 2 divided by e to the 3t. Here t is the variable, not x. Now that's not standard form because we need the exponential function on the top line to make it standard form. So I'm going to use the rule of indices, the negative rule of indices, to bring the e to the 3t to the top line. So I can write on the next line, y is equal to 2 multiplied by e to the minus 3t. So bringing the e to the 3t from the bottom to the top line, I change the sign of the index. That's the reciprocal rule of indices. I've now got standard form. So differentiating dy by dt, to use the notation of this question, is equal to the minus 3, the a, multiplied by 2, the constant, multiplied by e to the minus 3t. Tidying that up, minus 3 times 2 is minus 6, so I end up with minus 6, e to the minus 3t. All I've done on the last line to get my dy by dt is, again, reverting back to the negative rule of indices. I've taken the e to the minus 3t down below the line, and I end up with minus 6 on the top line divided by e to the positive 3t on the bottom line. Part C, we're given y is equal to 6 times the ln of 2x. That's a natural log function. If we look at our standard tables, we've got an ln ax function, where a would be 2 in this particular case, and that differentiates to 1 upon x, or x to the minus 1. Again, we reviewed this in our previous presentation on introduction to differentiation. So in this case, when you differentiate ln 2x, it simply goes to x to the minus 1. The a gets lost in the differentiation effectively. So we end up with a dy by dx equal to 6 multiplied by x to the minus 1. Again, all I've done on the last line to get my dy by dx is use the negative law of indices, and I've taken the x to the bottom line, so I've made it positive. So 6 divided by x is my final solution. Exercise 7, we're asked to find the gradient of the curve given the function y is equal to 3x to the 4 minus 2x squared plus 5x minus 2 at the points of 0 comma minus 2, read that as x comma y, and the point 1 comma 4, again read that as x comma y. So in this particular question we're actually going to have to differentiate the equation because it asks us to find the gradient, so we need to differentiate it. And once we have, we're going to put the values of x into the differential to find the 
gradient at that point. So it's a question of differentiating and this time using our solution. The answers are shown in the brackets if you want to attempt this on your own. Exercise 8 is quite similar. We're asked to determine the coordinates of a point on the graph. And again, we're given the equation y is equal to 3x squared minus 7x plus 2, where the gradient equals to minus 1. Now be careful here. We're actually given the dy by dx value. So exercise 8 wants us to differentiate the y function and then equate it to the gradient and then rearrange the equation to find the value of x, from which we can find then the value of y. So a little bit more complicated here, but again, if you want to attempt it on your own, please feel free. The answers are given here. The solutions to exercise 7 and 8 are shown in detail on the following slides. Exercise 7, we're asked to find the gradient of the curve y is equal to 3x to the 4 minus 2x squared plus 5x minus 2 at the point 0 comma minus 2 read that as x comma y and 1 comma 4 read that as x comma y now when it says to find the gradient of the curve that means for us to differentiate the curve so given y is equal to 3x to the 4 minus 2x squared plus 5x to the 1 minus 2x to the 0 notice I put the x and 0 against the last constant they're all standard form. They're all of the form ax to the n. And we know that the standard derivative is a n x to the n minus 1. So to find our dy by dx, it's simply following the pattern through. So 3 times 4 is 12x to the 4 take away 1 is 3. Minus 2 times 2 is 4. x to the 2 take away 1, that's x to the 1. Plus 5 times 1 is 5 x to the 1 take away 1, that's x to the 0, don't forget anything to the power of 0 is 1, so that gives us a constant of 5, and the final constant, the minus 2, always disappears when you differentiate it. We're asked now to find the gradient at the point, x is equal to 0, y is equal to minus 2. Now for the dy by dx equation, we actually only need the x equal to 0 value. What we're going to do now is put that x is equal to 0 value into the dy by dx equation. So put the 0 in here, so 12x cubed becomes 12 times the 0. Take away the 4x, that's 4 times the 0, plus the constant 5. So doing the arithmetic there, dy by dx is equal to 5. In other words, the gradient at the point x equals 0, y is equal to minus 2, is positive 5. Exercise 7 continued. We're now asked to find the gradient at the point x equal to 1, y is equal to 4. But again, we only need the information of x equal to 1 here. So all we do now is put the value of x equal to 1 into the dy by dx equation on the previous slide. So just putting the values into that equation, doing the arithmetic on that, we find the dy by dx, the gradient at that point, x equal to 1, y is equal to 4, is 13. What we've got below is a plot of the equation, y is equal to 3x to the 4 minus 2x squared plus 5x minus 2. And what we've done so far in this exercise is found the gradient at the point x is equal to 0, y is equal to minus 2, so this point here. If we draw a tangential line to that point, that would be the gradient of 5 we calculated on the previous slide. And on this slide, we've calculated the gradient at the point x is equal to 1, y is equal to 4, so that's the point here. If we draw a tangential line to that point, we find the gradient would be 13. Exercise 8, we're asked to find the coordinates of a point on a graph given the function y is equal to 3x squared minus 7x plus 2, where the gradient equates to minus 1. Now, as the question relates to the gradient, that implicitly means we have to differentiate the y function to get the dy by dx. And the other thing to be careful of here, unlike in exercise 7, when we were given values of x, to put into the dy by dx equation. In this question, we're actually given the gradient. The gradient is minus 1. So that minus 1 is the dy by dx. So once we found the dy by dx equation, we're going to put minus 1 on the left-hand side of it, and we're going to rearrange the equation to find the value of x at which that gradient occurs. Once we found the value of x, we can put it back into the original y equation and find the y-ordinate associated with that gradient of minus 1. So the first thing we need to do is to differentiate the y equation. So given that y is equal to 3x squared minus 7x plus 2, noting that each of those terms on the right-hand side are the form ax to the n, the polynomial form, we find the gradient in dy by dx using the standard form an 
x to the n minus 1. So 3x squared becomes 6x to the 1, or 6x, and minus 7x becomes minus 7. The constant plus 2 disappears when we differentiate. Now in the question, we're actually given the gradient dy by dx is negative 1 here. So what we're going to do is put the negative 1 on the left-hand side of the above equation, equating the minus 1 to the 6x minus 7, and then rearrange the equation to find x. So in this case, adding 7 to both sides will give you 6 on the left-hand side equals to 6x on the right-hand side, and then dividing both sides by 6, we get x equal to 1. So we now know that the gradient of minus 1 occurs when x is equal to 1. But we need to find the coordinate of the point, so we need to find the y value. So on the next slide, that's what we're going to do. Exercise 8 continued. So now we're going to back substitute the value of x found on the previous slide into the equation for y. So the y equation was y is equal to 3x squared minus 7x plus 2. All we're going to do is put the value of x in that equation. So now y is equal to 3x squared, that becomes 1 squared, minus 7 times x, that's the 1 plus the 2. Evaluating that expression, we get y is equal to minus 2. So what we've done now is found the coordinates of the point. The point is 1 comma minus 2 x comma y, at which the gradient is negative 1. So on the graph on the right hand side here, we found our point, which is at positive 1 and negative 2, which would actually be down here. And what we're essentially saying is that the gradient of that point is negative 1. And if we try to draw a tangent to that, that point, we would get something like this. It would be a slope in that direction of negative 1. Some further exercises here. Exercise 9. If v is equal to e to the 5t plus ln 2t, we're asked to determine the first differential equation dv by dt. Notice here that the notation has changed. The y now is v and the x now is t. Because the e to the 5t plus ln 2t is separated by a plus, we can just treat them as individual terms. So they're standard form. If you look in our standard derivative tables, you'll find an e to the ax form. So we can use that to differentiate e to the 5t. And you'll find an ln ax form. So we'll use that to differentiate the ln 2t. The solutions are given on the right-hand side in the brackets. Exercise 10, we're asked to differentiate y is equal to 3 multiplied by the sine of 4x plus 6 multiplied by the cos of 2x. Again, the terms separated by plus, so we'll take them individually, and you'll find in the tables there's a standard form for sine, sine ax, and there's a standard form for cos, cos ax. Solution is shown again on the right-hand side here, but just be careful, they factorise the final solution on 12. Exercise 11, we're asked to differentiate s is equal to 2 times by the tan of 8x minus 4 times by the cos of x. In this case, we're trying to find ds by dx. Notice again that the values are separated by a minus in this case, so we just take the tan and the cos function separately. There will be a tan ax in our standard forms, and there will be a cos ax in our standard forms. Notice here the a for the cos term is 1, so that's cos 1x. Solution shown again on the right-hand side here in the brackets, and a factor of 4 has been used for the final version of ds by dx. I would encourage you to stop the video here and have an attempt at these exercises before reviewing the solutions on the following slide. Exercise 9, we're given v is equal to e to the 5t plus ln 2t. We're asked to determine dv by dt, the gradient equation. So v is equal to e to the 5t, that's the standard form in our table of e to the ax. So the solution we're given is a times e to the ax. So in this case, the a is 5, that's 5 times e to the 5t. The x is t in this case. Looking at the second function, we've got plus ln 2t, that's of the form ln ax. And we're given a solution there of 1 upon x or x to the minus 1. So in this case, we can have plus t to the minus 1. Exercise 10, we're asked to differentiate y is equal to 3 times the sine of 4x plus 6 times the cos of 2x. So looking at the y function, taking the first term, 3 times the sine of 4x. Again, in our table, we've got sine ax, so a is 4 in this case. And the solution is a times the cos of ax. So in this case, it will be 3 the factor times 4 the a times the cos of 4x. Plus, notice here the change of sign because the cos ax function, when differentiated, becomes minus a sine ax. So be careful of that negative there. Basically, it becomes 6 times 2 times the sine of 2x. 
on the next line I just tied it up, 3 times 4 gives me 12, so that's 12 cos 4x, so the first term, and the plus and the minus makes the minus, 6 times 2 is 12, so it's 12 times 2x for the second term. What we've done to find our final solution of dy by dx is simply factorise on 12, so 12 outside the bracket. Exercise 11, we're asked to differentiate s is equal to 2 times the tan of 8x minus 4 times the cos of x. So s is equal to 2 times the tan of 8x. In our tables, we've got a standard form for tan of ax. That differentiates to a times sec squared ax. In this case, that will be dy by dx is equal to 2 times the 8. The a is the 8 times by sec squared of 8x. And we're taking away, because it's a takeaway in the original equation, and be careful of a change of sign here. We've got cos ax differentiates to minus a times sin ax. So in this case, we get minus 4 sin x. Notice in this case, the a is 1. So tidying that up, we get 16 times set squared 8x plus the double negatives here, 4 times the sine of x. And to get the final version of dy by dx, we factorise on 4. 4 is the highest common factor between the two terms. I'll leave you with some tutorial questions to attempt. Question 1 wants you to find the first differential dy by dx given the function y is equal to 5x cubed plus 7x squared minus x minus 1. All standard form terms, all of the ax to the n. Question 2 is giving you s equal to 7 times the square root of t minus 6 times t to the 0 0.3 minus e to the minus 2t. And we've got to find s dash, that means to find the ds by dt. Just be careful of the square root of t. Going back to a previous example, how would you deal with that in a fractional index? Question 3. Once you determine the f dash x, that's the dy by dx, when x is equal to 2, if y is equal to x minus 1 upon x. And again, be careful of the 1 upon x. You'll use your negative indices there to help you make that standard form. Basically, you've got to differentiate the equation, find the dy by dx, and put the value of 2 in for the equation. Question 4, given the expression dy by du, when y is equal to u minus u squared divided by u. Now be careful with that. What you need to do there is divide the bracket, the u minus u squared, by u initially, and that will simplify your terms. You'll actually get 1 minus u, and then differentiate with respect to u. Question 5, wants you to find the gradient of a curve, y is equal to x squared plus x, at the points of x is equal to 2, and x is equal to minus 2. I want you to find them graphically, but I'd encourage you just to do the differentiation in this particular case. So just differentiate the equation. So what you're going to do is, taking the y is equal to x squared plus x, you'll differentiate that, there are standard forms ax to the n there, and then put the value of x of 2 into the equation, put the value of x equal to minus 2 into the equation, and you should get the results on the right-hand side. All the answers are shown on the right-hand side in square brackets. Question 6. A body moves in a straight line, so its displacement x in metres from a given point O on the line at time t seconds is given by the formula stated below for each of the parts of the question. So the first part A, the formula is given as x equal to t cubed minus t squared, all standard forms of ax to the n. Of course, in this case, the y is actually x and the x is actually t, so just be careful of the notation change. Basically, what it wants you to do is to differentiate once to get the velocity equation, the dx by dt, and differentiate again to find the acceleration equation, the d2x by dt squared, or dv by dt equation, and then put the value of 2 into the equations to get the value of velocity after 2 seconds and acceleration after 2 seconds. All the parts of this question has given you a formula, a different formula, and it wants you to do the same approach in every part of the question. The answers are given on the right hand side of the brackets. Question 7. A particle moves in a straight line, so its displacement x is defined by x is equal to sine of 2 times t. We've got to show that the acceleration at time t is proportional to the x value and calculate this constant of proportionality. All well, sounds very grand, that question. What it basically means is you've got to differentiate the x function twice with respect to t. So you get a dx by dt as the first differential. That will equate 
to the velocity time equation. We'll differentiate it again to get the d2x by dt squared. That would equate to the acceleration time equation. And what you should find then is you get a factor of minus 4 in front of the sine 2t function. And that's your constant proportionality. But I'll let you go through the differentiation process to find that. Question 8. We're given that x is equal to ut plus a half times a times t squared. U and A are constants, they'll be pure numbers. We've got to show that the initial velocity, that's at time t is equal to zero, is U, and the acceleration at time t is equal to zero is A. So to do this, what we've got to do is differentiate the X equation once. We get dx by dt, which is the velocity equation. And if you put the value of t is equal to zero in there, you should find the velocity is U. And then differentiate the equation again to get the d2x by dt squared equation, which is the acceleration equation. And again, put the value of t is equal to zero in there, and you should find the acceleration is a. Question nine. We're given the relationship between displacement, x meters, and time, t seconds, moving in a straight line. is given as x is equal to t cubed minus 5t squared plus 3t. We're asked to calculate in part a the velocity and the acceleration after one second. So what we've got to do here is differentiate the x equation once to get the dx by dt equation, the velocity equation, and then put the value of 1 into that equation to find the velocity at one second, and then differentiate the equation again to get the d2x by dt squared equation, which is the acceleration equation, and again put the value of 1 into that to get the acceleration at one second. The answer is given are minus 4 meters per second for the velocity and minus 4 meters per second squared for the acceleration. Part B, we've got to find when and where the body in this case comes to rest. We're given a hint here, it says to let V, dx by dt, equals to zero, solve the resulting quadratic equation to find the value of t and then substitute this value of t into the equation for x, the equation given to find the displacement. I'll let you attempt that. Part C, we've got to find when and where the acceleration is zero. So that means we've got to put the value of zero into the acceleration equation on the left-hand side, rearrange it and solve for the value of t, and then put the value of t into the original x equation to find the distance. In part D, we've got to find the acceleration when the velocity is zero. So in this particular part of the question, you need to put zero on the left-hand side of the velocity equation, solve that for the value of t, and then put the value of t time into the acceleration equation. Question 10. A flywheel rotates according to the law theta is equal to 5 plus 14t minus 2t squared, where theta is the angular displacement in radians after time t seconds. We're asked to find the following. A, the number of radians turned through in the first two seconds. That requires us to put the value of time t is equal to 2 into the original equation given in the question for theta and then evaluate the number of radians turned through. Part B, we're asked to find the angle of velocity in radians per second after 3 seconds. Basically, what we've got to do here is differentiate the original equation for theta given in the question to find d theta by dt, i.e. the velocity equation, and then put the value of time t is equal to 3 seconds into it to find the angle of velocity after 3 seconds. Part C, we've got to find the initial angle of velocity in radians per second. So that will require us to put the value of t is equal to 0 into the d theta by dt, the velocity equation, and work out the value of angle velocity at time t is equal to zero. Part D requires us to find the initial angular acceleration in radians per second squared. That means we've got to find the second differential of theta, in other words, d2 theta by dt squared, which would be the acceleration equation, and then put the value of t is equal to zero into it to find the initial angular acceleration. In part E, we're asked to find the time when the flywheel comes to rest. So that means we're going to put the value of zero into the d theta by dt equation, the velocity equation, and then rearrange it to find t. I would encourage you to start the presentation now and attempt this question. The answer is given on the right-hand side in the square brackets. 
and the solution to question 10 is shown on the following slide for your reference. Question 10 solution, parts A and B shown here. We start off by taking the original equation for angular displacement theta, differentiated it once to get the d theta by dt equation or a theta dash equation which relates to angular velocity, differentiate it again, get the second differential which relates to angular acceleration. Here are the solutions for part A and B. Question 10 solutions continued for part C, D and D. Here's the bibliography used to generate this presentation and I would strongly encourage you to refer to these various textbooks for further information. They're very good engineering maths books specifically written for technician engineering students. I hope this presentation has been of interest to you and thank you for viewing.